Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Something happened a bit uh, earlier this week with my hot water system uh, and I thought as I fix it I might as well video it, make it a video for the channel. So what happened was uh, we were just uh, sitting in the house, uh, my son suddenly came in to me and said uh, the power has gone off uh, and sure enough uh, the um, RCD for one of the circuits in the house had tripped. So I went to the consumer unit to turn it back on and it almost immediately tripped off again. So as a, through a process of uh, elimination by turning all the circuits off and turning one on at a time and then re-enabling and seeing which one caused the trip, I figured out it was due to my uh, immersion heaters for my hot water tank. Um, so uh, there are two immersion heaters on my hot water tank. Um, so I had to figure out which one of the two was causing the problem. Um, so I um, re-enabled the circuit um, and disabled them one at a time and saw which one caused the trip and unfortunately it was the one at the very bottom. Um, now my suspicion was that the element had just blown. This tends to be what happens. I, I've had it happen when the element in the oven has blown. Uh, in the same way you just get a dead short inside when they go and that just causes a trip as soon as you turn it on so um, it needed to be replaced and so what follows is what I had to do to get that all resolved. So for those who don't know here is a uh, picture of a typical um, Economy 7 type hot water tank you have the tank with uh, two elements in it, one, one about midway and one right near the bottom. Uh, you have a cold water feed coming in at the bottom uh, on the left here and uh, the hot water is drawn off at the top which goes to the taps in your bath and your sinks etc. The two elements uh, give you the flexibility to uh, either heat just half the tank or to heat the entire tank. Um, they also give you the ability to um, turn both elements on at the same time and thus heat all the water in the tank much more quickly. So as I said it was the bottom element that had blown and in order to replace it uh, I obviously have to take the old one out. Now these are screwed into um, uh, a fitting on the tank itself uh, and so uh, they will need to be unscrewed in order to remove them. Obviously I can't just unscrew it and take it out uh, because the tank is full of water and all the water will come pouring out of that hole. So the very first thing I need to do before I do anything else is to drain the tank of water. So we need to drain the tank but how do we do that? The way these tanks work is that the cold water feed that comes in at the bottom of the tank pushes the water in the tank out through the pipe at the top. Now as hot water naturally rises the hot water will be sitting at the top of the tank so as the cold water comes in at the bottom it pushes the water column up and the hot water gets pushed out through the pipe at the top towards the taps. To empty the tank it's no good just switching on all the taps yes the hot water will start to come out but as quickly as it's coming out fresh cold water will be going into the tank at the bottom. So what most tanks have is an isolation valve on the cold water feed. You turn this valve and that cuts off the incoming supply of water to the tank. The problem now is that if you now switch on the taps to try and empty the tank there's no water pressure to push that water through and out the taps. You might get a little bit of flow at first, but that's just the water that's in the pipe draining out. So 
at the bottom of every tank will be a small tap that you can attach a hose to that will allow you to drain all the water from the tank right to the bottom. Once you've drained all the water from the tank you can then safely remove either of the heating elements without water pouring out all over the floor. In order to drain the tank you really need to get a length of hose, put it onto the end of this tap and secure it with either a Jubilee clip or a cable tie and then take the other end of the hose and put it outside or down a sink or down a toilet somewhere lower than the tank. Then you just undo the tank valve and the water will slowly drain from the tank until there's no more left. Yeah, it will be at first. Bottom of the tank will be cold. So once the tank is drained, you can then try and get the immersion heater out. Now the first thing you've got to do is disconnect all of the electric wiring. Um, obviously making sure to isolate the wiring before you touch any of it. Once you've disconnected all the wiring, it's then a question of getting a special giant spanner uh, which you can then use to uh, twist the immersion heater out. Now these are usually really tight and um, sometimes they require uh, a bit of heating up with a blowtorch just to uh, make them a bit easier to remove from the tank without damaging the tank. So I spent a bit of time heating it up with a blowtorch uh, and then using the special immersion heater removing tool uh, and a hammer uh, was able to uh, free it up enough that I could then twist it out by hand. So it was a little difficult to uh, get it out through the hole because it had become so crusted up with uh, chalky water deposits.
it's important to give the screw threads on the uh, hole a good clean because there's a lot of bits of chalk and debris in there where I just pulled out the uh, old immersion heater and you obviously want a nice good clean uh, connection between the new immersion heater and and the screw thread so that you don't get water leaking out from around the immersion once you've got it in place and the tank refilled. The new immersion heater comes with a soft gasket that you need to put over the screw threads first. Uh, this just gives you uh, helps to give you a nice tight seal. Now before inserting the new immersion heater into the hole you need to put three or four wraps of PTFE tape around the screw threads. This just helps to give you a really uh, watertight seal uh, when you put it in so that uh, you don't get any leakage. Uh, it's also important to remember to put the PTFE tape in the right direction otherwise when you screw the immersion heater in you'll actually be undoing the PTFE tape so you need to make sure that the PTFE tape will be uh, pulled tighter as as you screw the immersion heater in. So before I get ready to refill the tank with water, I put a piece of dry tissue paper uh, around the bottom of the immersion heater so that if there is any water start dripping out from around the screw threads, uh, I'll be able to see it on the tissue because it'll make a wet patch and then I'll know I need to tighten it up a little bit more. So now everything is set to refill the tank with water. So first I have to just uh, close the uh, drain valve at the bottom uh, and then um, undo the uh, isolation valve to allow cold water to start filling the tank again from the bottom. Still dry. Uh, all the while keeping a close eye on the uh, threads around the uh, Im immersion heater that I just replaced to make sure that it doesn't start leaking. So now that the tank has all refilled uh, and we've left it for uh, an hour or so to make sure there's no leaks it's time to reconnect the wiring. So just uh, connect the uh, earth to the uh, big earth rod terminal there and then the live and neutral uh, as per the instructions. Um, put the cover cap back on to make it safe uh, and then uh, reconnect it to the electricity supply. And that's it, job done. Still dry. Just 
just check if we've got hot water coming, well, at least water coming through the hot system again now. Yep. Okay, that's it for this week. Uh, as you can see, we got it all resolved in the end, uh, and I'm happy to say we've got plenty of hot water again. Um, there may be a bit of a break between uh, this video and the next one. Uh, I'm going on holiday, so uh, it may be uh, a couple of weeks before I make another video, but uh, there will be one coming, so do stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, please do like, comment, share, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you on the next video.